closer, it is an honor and a privilege to be in this space to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and also with those of you who are joining us online. Thank you for being with us in this time where we worship our Lord and Savior. Am I on? There we go. My name is Mary Ann Cope, and I'm your lay liturgist this morning. Um, Baker is a reconciling church where diversity is welcome and respected, and our mission is living God's will to love, welcome, and share Christ with all. We're so glad you're here with us this morning. Um, we have a couple of announcements for you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that was next. Okay. <laughs> sorry. We'll get this. Um, let's see. We have youth leadership team meeting tonight at 6 p.m. And the senior high mission trip is at 7 p.m. On Tuesday is the Anya Bible study here in the chapel at 9 a.m. And you are welcome to join us at any time, any of the ladies that would like to. Uh, vegetation team is at 2 p.m. on Tuesday, and we have a prayer meeting that night at 7. So the prayer meeting is going to be Zoom only. I did send an email out last week with the Zoom link. I'll send another one out tomorrow also. Also on Thursday at 7 p.m. is our SPRC meeting, and we have an Ad Council meeting coming up on the 18th of this month. That's also a Tuesday evening. That one will be a hybrid meeting, so we'll send out a Zoom link for that as the time gets closer. All right, and would you listen as I read to you our upper room moment this morning. This comes from this past Wednesday, January 5th. The passage of Scripture is Isaiah 42.10. It reads, Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise from the ends of the earth. Sing his praise from the ends of the earth. And the writer is Valerie Bryant Bennett from Tennessee. She writes this. One day I began my usual morning prayers. I prayed for my children's needs, my needs, and the needs of friends and family. Suddenly, a vivid image of a gumball machine popped into my head. As a child, I enjoyed putting a coin in the slot, turning the handle, and having a colorful gumball fall into my hands. I realized I had been praying as if I were inserting coins into a gumball machine. Almost all of my prayers were petitions, and I was acting as though I expected God's answers to drop into my life like gumballs into my hand. While God is compassionate and willing to help us when we ask, I realized that I was taking for granted the wonders of creation, God's generous gifts and the sacrifice Christ made for us. Now when I pray, I begin with praise. Instead of immediately thinking of what may be lacking in my life and in the lives of my loved ones, I find joy in first recognizing the amazing love and generosity of God. I find that when my praise prayers remind me of all that God has done, my please prayers come from a trusting, thankful heart. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Dear Lord God, help us not to wait until we need something but to stay close to you at all times, expressing praise and trust. Amen. Would you continue in an attitude of prayer as we listen to the prelude this morning from Jim York?
thanks and praise for the talents that God has given to Jim and to Jeff. Thank you, gentlemen. Marianne? That was just so beautiful. I was just still enjoying it. So I'm sorry. Yep. Very good. <laughs> oh, now we have our call to worship. And if you will follow along. Sing praises to God, O you saints, and give thanks to God's holy name. We revere you, O God, for you have restored us to life. We may cry through the night, but your joy comes with the morning. You hear us, O God, and you are gracious in our distress. You turn our mourning into dancing. Our souls cannot be silent. O oh God, our Savior, we give thanks to you for that. Would you join us in our hymns, Trading My Sorrows and House of the Lord? The words will be on the screens. And please stand as you are willing and able. Jeff came this morning. There's no other man, but you got to sing loudly. <laughs> okay, so and Jeff I've says sing loud. I've lost my music for the first one, so bear with me if something goes awry. <laughs>
worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. Our God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out of your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out of your praise. Oh, oh, oh. we shout out your praise. God who heals, we sing to the God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes a way. Because he hung upon that cross, then he rose up from that grave, my God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out of your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place, we won't be quiet, we shout out of your praise, cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty, we were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out of your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out of your praise. Oh, 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 shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. I thought it was children's time. Greeting. Oh, greeting one another. We kind of flip things around, so I'm sorry. I'm just not doing it well this morning. I'm sorry. Um, at this time, if you will greet one another with a holy wave and a, a smile with your eyes. and So there are no children this morning. So I'm going to tell you what I was going to do. I'm going to tell you all what I was going to do. Maybe you're, you're fortunate that there are no children this morning. Do you know what today is on the church calendar? It is the baptism of the Lord. And the passage that we read normally on today is, let me read it for you, if I put my glasses on to see it. When all the people were being baptized, this is from Luke 3, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. So I was going to talk a little bit about this with the children, 
And then I was going to give them the opportunity to take these branches and just walk through the sanctuary, dip them in water, and do this! <laughs> and that would represent the baptism of the Lord. So I'm going to ask you all to lead uh, through this, read through this, our baptism liturgy, which should be up on the screens. If we change the screens, there we go. So there's the Luke passage, which I already read. Please go to the next slide. There we are. So, do you all, in the presence of God and this congregation, renew the solemn vow and promise made at your baptism? Now, wait a minute before you answer. Many of you, because I've asked this before, many of you probably don't remember your baptism because you were baptized as infants, right? But as you grew up, you took on that promise that was made on your behalf by your parents at your baptism. So, in the presence of God in this congregation, do you renew the solemn vow and promise that you made to God at some point in time? If so, please say, I do. Do you truly and earnestly repent of your sins? If so, please say, I do. Do you believe in God the Father? Please respond. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Please respond. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? If so, please respond. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the Old and New Testament scriptures? I do. Do you promise according to the grace given you to keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in the same all the days of your life as faithful members of Christ's holy church? Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. We will now have the Old Testament reading, and I'll be reading from 1 Samuel 1 through 6 and then 14 through 20a. There was a wealthy man from the tribe of Benjamin named Kish. He was the son of Abel, son of Zeor, son of Bacorath, son of Aphia, a Benjamite. He had a son named Saul, who was a handsome young man. No one in Israel was more handsome than Saul, and he stood head and shoulders above everyone else. When the donkeys belonging to Saul's father, Kish, were lost, Kish said to his son, Saul, take one of the servant boys with you and go look for the donkeys. So he traveled through the highlands of Ephraim and the land of Shalish, and they didn't find anything. They traveled through the land of Shalim, but still found nothing. So they crossed back into the land of Benjamin, but they still couldn't find the donkeys. When they came to the territory of Zuf, Paul said to the boy who was Saul said to the boy who was with him, "Let's go back before my father stops worrying about the donkeys and starts worrying about us." But the boy said to him, "Listen, there's a man of God in this town. He's famous. Everything he says actually happens. So let's go there. Maybe he'll be able to tell us which way we should go." So Saul and the boy went up to the town, and as they entered it, suddenly Samuel came toward them on his way to the shrine. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed the following to Samuel. 
about this time tomorrow, I will send a man from the Benjamite territory. You will anoint him as leader of my people, Israel. He will save my people from the Philistines' power because I have seen the suffering of my people and their cry for help has reached me. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, that's the man I told you about. That's the one who will rule my people. Saul approached Samuel in the city gate and said, please tell me where the seer's house is. I am the seer, Samuel told Saul. Go on ahead of me to the shrine. You can eat with me today. In the morning, I'll send you on your way, and I will tell you everything you want to know. As for the donkeys you lost three days ago, don't be worried about them because they have been found. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. At this time, I will call us to contemplate once again how God is calling us in this time, in this particular week. How is God calling us to offer of ourselves something of the gifts that God has given to us for the good of others and for the glory of God? As our chancel choir sings the anthem, I invite you, if you feel so moved, to come forward and place your offerings in the plates. Let us once again consider what God is calling us to this week.
merciful God, for all the gifts that you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to pour blessings upon us. And we seek to know how you would have us use those blessings for your glory. Please give us guidance and wisdom, especially for those gifts that we have returned to your church, so that we may use them as you have called us to do. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Would you please be seated? This gospel lesson is from Matthew 6, verses 25 through 34, and it's from the Common English Bible. Jesus said, Therefore, I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow seed or harvest grain or gather crops into barns. Yet, they, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Who among you, by worrying, can add a single moment to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? Notice how the lilies in the, in the field grow. They don't wear themselves out with work, and they don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon, in all his splendor, wasn't dressed like one of these. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace, won't God do much more for you, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, stop worrying about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The word of God for all to hear and receive. Thanks be to God. Would you please be seated? Why worry when God is with you? We have that story from the Old Testament in 1 Samuel where Saul's father sent him to go find some donkeys were missing. Do you ever find in your daily lives that there is something missing that you need to find? How many of you have had that experience where you've looked for something and you can't find it? Yeah, that's a, probably a universal thing. You know, Samuel, he looked all over the place. I'm sorry, not Samuel, Saul looked all over the place for those donkeys and couldn't find them and then thought, well, you know what? My father's probably going to get worried about us. Maybe we should go back. But his friend knew about this seer guy named Samuel. And so they decided to go see him and find out if he might help them find the donkeys. Now, we have today in our lives the presence of the Holy Spirit and we can go to God directly for help 
Now, I'll ask this. Have you ever, when you're looking for something and can't find it, said to God, Lord, would you show me where those keys are? And in about two minutes, your eyes go to them. You ever have that experience? I've had that experience a number of times. It's wonderful when I just simply say, Lord, show me where I am looking for that thing. Show me where it is. And within five minutes, I find it. Praise God for that great, great promise. Now, what about worrying? Worrying about people. Worrying about situations or the health of other people or even what's going to happen in the future. Well, what does worry do for us? Does it help? Some of you are shaking your head. Yeah. I don't think it helps. Actually, studies have been done medically that it harms us. Now, here are some things that might be familiar to you. If you ever worry, you find that worrying occupies your thoughts in a negative way. And you constantly focus on what might happen. Now, I have a current situation in my own family where my sister-in-law is fighting pancreatic cancer. I could worry about that if I chose to, but I choose not to. Instead, I listen to what my brother tells me about her situation, and then I focus my prayers on those things that he shares with me. So instead of worrying about it, I pray about it, because that's what Jesus is calling us to do, not to worry. So why worry when God is with us? I want to share some things that I found on WebMD about what worrying actually does within us. And I won't go as long this time, Bonnie, okay? It won't be an infomercial. Worry consumes mental energy. It drains us. It makes us weary. It can cause unrealistic fears. And it can cause us to see people or other things as a threat. It, neg it negatively affects our lifestyle, our appetite, our sleep, our relationships with others, and our job performance. Chronic worrying can cause unnecessary anxiety and stress which in turn can trigger what we know as the fight-or-flight self-protection response. And repeated anxiety and stress can cause health problems like, and this is just a short list, dizziness, fatigue, headaches, irritability, muscle aches and tension, nausea, rapid breathing and heartbeat, shortness of breath, and the list goes on and on and on. If not checked... All this can cause more serious and even life-threatening disorders, such as the suppression of our immune systems, coronary artery disease, and even heart attacks. So what can we do to defeat worry and anxiety? Well, there's some practical things, and I bet you already know these. Daily exercise, healthy diet, moderate caffeine intake, how about spending more time with family and friends that you really like? Meditate on good things, perhaps some scripture. What I like to do is meditate on a one single passage and just think about it, what it really means to me. And then Christ, of course, tells us to pray. Why worry when God calls us to pray? Constant worry can be a sign of an anxiety disorder. And what the website told me was if you experience constant worry, talking to your doctor or perhaps a professional counselor can help. Now, Jesus tells us in this particular passage of the New Testament that we are not to worry, not to worry about our possessions, not to worry about our finances, our food, our clothes, even our bodies. We're not to worry about these things. He says, God knows our needs, and God will provide for all of those needs 
just as God provides for the birds of the flowers. Did you happen to notice when you were sitting down, when we had the announcement slides going, there was a photograph of a very red cardinal within a bunch of trees. Did you notice that? That particular bird is cared for by God. God provides all that that bird needs in order to live on this earth. And if God will provide for the bird, then we can trust that God will provide for every need that we have. I'll give you a not-so-modern, well, it's a modern but a not-so-current example. Ten, twelve years ago when I was in seminary, I was called to seminary. I knew God was calling me to seminary in about 2007, so I went in 2008. The seminary that I went to had a program where I would receive all of my Master of Divinity classes paid for by a scholarship if I got them done within three years. Okay? So in order to do this, I had to go to school all through that entire three years. I had no more than two weeks off at a time, and then I would go back to class. Summertime, January break, all of that. I was in school. In doing all of that, I couldn't work. I couldn't hold any kind of a job because it took so much time to cram all of that work into studying and doing all of the writing. So what God did was God showed me how I could live on less than $7,000 per year in those three years that I was in seminary. And God showed me through work on researching on the Internet where I could find little loans or grants. Actually, they were grants. Some are between $500 and $2,000 per year. And I was able to get those for three years in a row and live on less than $7,000 per year. God called me to do this, and God provided. Even though it wasn't a lot, God provided for what I needed. This is the promise that Jesus tells us in this passage of Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness and all these things, everything that we need to live in this life that God has called us to do will be given to us as well. So why worry when God's Word promises that God will provide for our needs? Now he says, Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom. What is the kingdom? We've talked about this before, but I'll remind you, and here are some things that might sound a little different. The kingdom is where God's sovereign authority is recognized, God's will is obeyed, and God's promises are lived to the best of our ability with God's help. The kingdom is within all of Christ's followers, all of Christ's disciples. That's where the kingdom resides now. The kingdom continues to come as more and more people grow to know and love Jesus. So by desiring God's kingdom first, above all worldly goods, we are trusting in the Father's providential care. And when we do this, there is no need to worry because worry only causes anxiety. But God will meet all our needs, so there is no need to worry. And then Jesus also says, seek God's righteousness. What is righteousness? It is the character of being righteous. It is conformity in character and conduct to a right standard, God's standard. It is coming to spiritual oneness with God. And it is behavior in our lives that fulfills relationships and makes them whole. Now, why worry when God has provided us a means to be righteous? Righteousness comes through faith in Jesus Christ. So what's the end result of all of this? Stop worrying about tomorrow, Jesus says, because tomorrow will worry about itself. 
Each day has enough trouble of its own. Jesus is telling us to address each day's problems as they come with the confidence that our lives are in God's hands, with the confidence and the trust that the world is in God's hands, and that in the midst of all our troubles, God is with us. Why worry when instead we can pray for God's will to be done and God's plan for humanity and for our individual lives to become reality. Thank you, Lord, for the message of Jesus who taught us that we are to trust and to not worry. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Would you sing together our song of worship in response? Never once. You are willing to sit or stand as you feel able and willing.
We thank you for the opportunity that you give us, not only on Sunday mornings, but any time to come before you in praise and worship. Thank you, Lord, that you have called us to faith and given us the gift of faith. Thank you that you have given us the desire to receive that precious gift of faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you also give us the privilege to come before you with our petitions because you do call us in your word to come before you with anything and everything that we may need. So, Lord, there are folks in our congregation, in our families, in our neighborhoods, and around the world who are in need of your healing, of your grace, of your mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you have placed in us the gift of faith to pray to you with confidence that you indeed will answer our prayers as you see fit. And so we lift to you these persons, Carol and Sue and Samuel and Brian. All these persons, Lord, in the name of Jesus, are seeking your health, your healing, your wholeness. We pray that as you see fit, you will work within their lives to bring for them what they need in this moment. We lift you, Jean and Anne and Christopher and his family. For those who are suffering, for those who are in need of guidance and protection, we ask that you give all of what they need for this day and the weeks to come. For Linda and for Glenn and for Roxanne and for Eileen and for Elsa, we ask, Lord, wholeness, healing, grace, and mercy. As you see fit, and as is good for each one. We also lift to you Peggy, Jason and family, Michael, Bridget, Chris, and baby Patrick. You know the needs of each of these persons far better than we know them, Lord. And we come to you humbly as you have called us to, seeking your grace and your mercy for each one, seeking healing for those who are in need of healing, seeking wisdom for medical teams who will be working with some of these folks. And Lord, in the midst of all of it, we ask for each person that we have lifted to you that your will be done and your kingdom come into each of their lives and their hearts and their minds. And in this moment, as you feel so led, lift to God the names of someone that you have on your heart, either with your voices or silence. Thank you, Lord, for if there is an opportunity for the persons that you have laid on our hearts, that we might be a source of blessing, affirmation, and words of grace, that you would show us an opportunity, give us the time and the resources to do so, and at the very least, Lord, continue to lead us and guide us to lift these persons in prayer in our private prayer times so that we may not lose sight 
of the work that you are doing in them and the work that you are doing in us, continually transforming us to become more and more like Jesus, who taught us to pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And would you stand as you are willing and able to sing together our closing hymn, It Is Well, which is number 377 in your hymn.
I give the benediction, I just want to remind those of you who wish to join me shortly following our service this morning that we will have our adult uh, Sunday school class right here in the chapel shortly after service. So, why worry when God is with us? If you have something that you need help with, the first thing to do is to go to God and not worry. Because God has promised us in God's word that our needs will be met. So go in peace with that assurance that God is meeting your needs and the needs of others. Go and be a blessing. Thanks be to God. Amen.